Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology as well as work vlogs. So I got a few questions about my cybersecurity rotation program and I had also been meaning to make a video about this because I am officially graduating from the program since it has been about two years since I have started in this company. So I figured I would just share a little bit with you guys about my experience being on a rotation program, um, how I've been switching my teams, how you can potentially find a rotation program, as well as the pros and cons compared to going into a job directly without having to make rotations. So just a little bit of background about me as well as the program that I'm in. I graduated with my bachelor's in information technology and I had a computer security and digital forensics certification from my college. So nothing nationally or internationally acclaimed, but specifically just from taking a few extra courses in college. I've been working for the same company for about the last two years, ever since I graduated college, and I have had two one-year rotations. Now, of course, every company is going to be different with this. So I know there's some companies who have two-year rotations but then there's three rotations so like eight months in each team and then some that only rotate once where you're in your first team and then after that you graduate and you can choose between the team you're on versus another team you might go into so there's definitely a lot of different variations of rotational programs but i do think it's a really really great opportunity to learn especially if you don't know exactly what you want to do which is me and so first, I guess I'll let you guys know about the actual hiring and interviewing process. So for me, when I was graduating college, I was really applying to any role that was focused in coding, data science, and cybersecurity. However, most of the roles I was looking for was actually in coding or software development. And many companies nowadays actually do rotational programs where you can basically switch teams and then you get to decide which teams you can go into. Some of them allow you to shadow and kind of like figure out what teams that you can go into like mine, but some of them also decide for you ahead of time based on your skills and your background. If you're someone who is graduating from college or is still a student, then rotational programs are a lot easier to find because you can literally find like entry-level rotation programs for cybersecurity or something and a whole bunch of companies will pop up for those search results. But if you're in your mid-career and looking for a rotation program, you might not be able to find as many roles or companies that have those, but there's definitely transitional companies. For example, if you're in a background that isn't technology, that kind of take you, teach you certain things, and then put you in rotations using that. But just with my experience having gone through it in the last two years, and of course this isn't going to be the same for everybody since every company probably has a different process for things, but my rotation program is specifically for cybersecurity entry-level roles, and everyone in my rotational cohort is actually in a different team. So our first team, we actually didn't get to choose them. The company chose it for us based on our background. And then the second rotation, I actually had to interview for it. So they kind of treat it like a real job that you're interviewing for, but I definitely don't think it's as in-depth compared to like interviewing for a completely new company because I mean, people know you. And of course you probably have a program manager or a recruiter that you're working with. So you kind of already know what to expect. But in my first rotation, I was actually working on a cybersecurity strategy and development team. So I was doing half coding and then half cybersecurity strategy or kind of like a project management type role. And that was definitely really good exposure and experience for me because that was the first time I actually managed something that was like a project and not just specifically something I was working on. It was also the first role where I was actively hosting meetings and talking to stakeholders and basically learning the business acumen of the company and the business. And then for my second rotation, that's the team that I'm currently on right now. And I actually interviewed for this team. So it was actually a pretty formal interview. I had my team lead on the call. I had my manager and my manager's manager. So they were basically taking turns asking me questions about my background, my experience, um, how I got started pen testing, what is my mindset and my flow when I'm trying to solve a problem. And it was actually a lot more formal than I prepared for, so I'm actually really glad I got the role still, but, but I also do feel like the rotation program interviews are not as serious or not as cutthroat compared to the ones where you are brand new to the company and people don't even know who you are. So I do think it was still overall a really good transitional experience. And on my current team, I do web application pen testing and I focus on data loss prevention. So anywhere where someone could potentially exfil data from the company is what I focus on. And of course, every pen testing team does something different. Um, there's actually a lot of them out there, especially if you're looking at like red team, blue team, purple team and everything like that. So if you're someone like me who didn't really know exactly what they wanted to do when they were going into like the full-time job world, definitely look into getting a rotation program because I am still not exactly sure what team I want to go into, but I have had the chance to shadow a bunch of different teams. So I feel like when you're in a rotation program, people kind of see you as like an entry level person who they kind of see you honestly like an intern, even though you're not, you're probably going to be full time, but they sometimes still kind of refer to you as an intern because you're not going to be 
permanently staying on their team while you're in the program but because of that you're able to have a lot more flexibility in shadowing people talking to teams outside of your immediate team and under your immediate manager and i think that's a huge plus because even on my current team that i'm on even though i'm doing pet testing i can also shadow the red team or the blue team and i kind of have recurring time with them set up because of the way my program is formatted it kind of gives me more flexibility to meet different teams and talk to people because because your manager knows that you're not going to be staying on that team and a lot of them are going to be willing to support you in trying to find that team that you're interested in and now going into the kind of like the end of my rotation program which has been almost two years and i'm officially graduating so i'm looking for my full-time team some people go back to one of their old teams that they've had and some people are shadowing like me to kind of still find that right fit and one piece of advice that i've been getting is that there's never a perfect team like even if there's something you might like to do there might be a part of it that you don't like to do on that team but you kind of have to see at a holistic level because the perfect team just doesn't exist with the perfect manager, with the perfect coworkers, in the perfect location, doing the perfect thing that you love to do, especially when you don't know what you love to do. So that's why I've kind of been keeping that in mind while I'm looking for a new team. So the four teams I'm currently shadowing is one development team. I originally didn't plan on going back to coding, but that's definitely something I've thought about. So that's definitely an interesting team to shadow because in my first team, I did do development, but it was in a very small coding team. So this one has like almost I think 15 or 10 people so it's definitely a lot bigger compared to my old team and then the second one is more of a process focused team where you're kind of like managing different processes in cybersecurity related teams it's also kind of more focused on a project management or PM kind of role and then the third one is also kind of PM or project management focused but then there's also some testing and research that is involved in that and then the third team is the digital forensics team which i think i've told you guys already about before which i took a class on in college and in that class we basically tried to recover deleted files from a disk drive or a hard drive and i thought that was really interesting and fun and i've just started shadowing this team so i still only know what they do at a high level so i'll definitely keep you guys updated on whether or not this is something that i will be pursuing but these four teams are kind of the main options that i have and i think the last two would probably be the most interesting to me right now but of course things would change but that's another thing that i want to emphasize because because i have the option to kind of shadow teams beforehand i can really see exactly what the team does on an everyday basis which goes into the pros and cons of being in a rotation program so starting with the pros one of the biggest ones is that you get to see what a team is and what they do during your shadowing sessions if you get to have any um, before you actually join the team so a lot of times people will tell you high level what they do or they'll tell you that yeah we manage this project but what does the day-to-day -day look like for that you know like is it a lot of meetings is it a lot of documentation or are you working independently a lot and that's what i really like to know before i head into a team and something else that's really nice is that since you're getting to shadow you can also kind of talk to people because sometimes when you're interviewing for a role you're only talking to like the manager once during the interview and then maybe after that you don't talk to them until you officially start but with shadowing you're probably going to be having sessions with that manager maybe once a week for a short amount of time or um, they kind of forward you whatever meetings that they're in and then you can sit in on them and see how interested you might be in that team or the work and then you might also be getting to shadow with some of your potential future teammates and i also think that's really good because it kind of shows you like what the team environment will be like and how it would feel just getting to work with people and you know like i feel like people are just as important as the work that you do and i would actually say it's like 50 50 the people you work with and the work that you're doing because if you love your job and love what you're doing but you aren't really happy with like the team culture or the management style just doesn't seem to work for you for some reason then that's definitely you know a red flag and it's something that you should think about before you go into that team and that's why getting to shadow and doing rotation programs is definitely really really helpful another pro is that a lot of people are more willing to talk to you if you're in a rotation program or some kind of entry-level program for example a lot of companies have like a tap program or a technology analyst program and usually for these roles people kind of know that program you know like they know that's the entry-level role and if you do reach out to someone after like watching them present at a meeting or something and you reach out and say hey i'm part of the tap program or i'm a new tap hire and i really enjoyed your presentation on xyz um and this is something that i'm really interested in looking into for my potential 
potential next team or my career? Would it be all right if I scheduled maybe a quick 30 minute call in your calendar to discuss more about your background, how you got to where you are, um, any advice that you could give me, etc. And you would be surprised how many people are just willing to talk to people just because they're in like an entry level or rotational program. And this also leads me to another con, which is people are more willing to kind of mentor you and kind of talk to you because you're in an entry level program. I've gotten a lot of my mentors just starting out and talking about my rotation program and a lot of them actually haven't heard of my program before because it's newer and it's actually really nice getting to explain like what our program does, what the benefits of the program are, um, who's kind of like my program manager and what differentiates us from other rotational programs. So I don't want to say it's like a bragging kind of thing but it's definitely something like a conversation starter with people who might not know as much about your program and I guess it also goes into branding for yourself. Another pro is that usually rotation programs have a cohort, so which means it's like a huge group of people that you can actually talk to, be friends with, kind of all connect together and catch up and see and compare like where you guys are in wherever journeys you guys are. And it's kind of like being friends but then coworkers at the same time because you usually come in around the same time um, and then every year there's new people added to your rotation program that you can talk to you and bounce ideas off of. So I do think it's really, really nice because it's kind of like a support system at work where if I have something that I need to talk to someone about, I can usually talk to someone in my cohort and I'm comfortable sharing with them um, things that are going on at work any issues I might be having, any questions I might have, I usually bounce my ideas off of them and it's just a really good sounding board, especially for things where you don't really wanna to talk to your manager or a coworker about, but when it comes to someone in your rotation program, it's a lot easier to talk about it because you guys came into the company at the same time and it's easier for you to be closer compared to like other coworkers. And that's definitely been a huge plus for me because I really do care about community and being able to feel like I'm welcomed and fitting in somewhere. And my last pro is actually just the events and speaking engagements and presentations that are held for people in rotation programs. For example, I just had a presentation this morning that was hosted by my rotation program leads that were about failure and how to bounce back up from failure, as well as different topics like mentorship, career guidance, personal branding, executive presence, and stuff like that. And then my rotation program has also planned a lot of events for us where, where executives from my company come to talk to us in a smaller group and we get to ask them questions about whatever we want. So it's definitely really, really nice just getting to know them because, because if you're a direct hire and you weren't hired in from your rotation program, it's definitely harder for you to make connections with senior leaders or someone who might not be as related. But since you have some kind of program that's dedicated um, that you can talk about, it's actually a lot easier to meet people through these events and learn things from these presentations. The career and professional development piece is definitely there. Okay, so of course not everything is perfect. So let's go into the cons of rotation programs. I wonder how many times I would have said rotation programs in this video by the time I finish it. But one of the cons is of course what happens if you like your first team and that's exactly what you want to do. So if you're in a two-year rotation program and you have two or three rotations and you already like your first team and don't want to leave, that can definitely be a little bit difficult. And I know people who have kind of been through this, but of course it depends on your company. Some of them are flexible and it may let you keep doing your rotations with that same team without having to rotate out and then just graduating from there. But of course, some companies might not be as flexible and say that you have to rotate, but you may be able to graduate from the program and then come back to that first team. So if it just so happens that you end up really loving your team, really loving your manager and what you do on that first team, then the need for a rotation program might not even be there anymore, especially because you're kind of already found you know, like your home team. But there also may be companies out there with hiring programs or entry-level hiring programs that only have rotation programs. And in this case, then you might not have any choice but to go into a rotation program, even though you don't want to. And even though you already know that you want to be like a data analyst, but then this program makes you rotate for a certain number of times. Another con could be that relatively, when you compare someone who starts out their career two years in and they're on one team versus someone who has been in a rotation program for two years, and we're on two teams, this person who was on one team for two years is gonna have way more in-depth experience compared to the one who had been on two teams because the person who wasn't in a rotation program basically had more time to learn exactly what the team does more in depth and could probably become a subject matter expert or SME in that area and have a deeper sense of knowledge for that team. And that may or may not be more impactful in your career compared to someone who doesn't know exactly what they're doing but then switches teams in their rotation program, getting to know the material, getting to know everything that they do. And then once they are getting used to it, it's time to switch to their next team, you know? 
So there's definitely like kind of like a gap between how deep your knowledge can go when you're only on a team for a year or six months or eight months um, compared to someone who was on a team for two years, three years, and it never had to switch because they were a direct hire. So that's definitely a trade-off when you're in a program like this where you have to switch team. So of course it could be a pro or a con depending on how you see it. Another potential con could be that since you're switching teams so often and you have so many people, recruiters, HR people, your day-to-day -day manager that you talk to and report to, there might not be one specific person that knows you really, really well to give you a really good rating or a really good recommendation. This could be for end of year reviews or if you're switching companies and trying to get someone to give you a review. If you're only with the team for less than a year, it could be hard for the manager to say something substantial to your next team or your next manager. And overall, since the manager knows that you're leaving, you might be able to get to know them as much compared to someone who might be staying on their team full-time and not saying that they're going to treat you poorly because you're in a rotational program but i do think since there's a limited amount of time that you're on the team managers might not be able to get to know you as well compared to people who are on their team permanently or you know semi-permanently for whenever they decide to leave but it's not like a rotational program where you're definitely going to be leaving after six months or whatever set amount of time all right so that's it for this video i hope you guys found it helpful definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about anything that i mentioned um, or extra questions about anything else in cybersecurity. i'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have and for those of you who don't know i did recently start a patreon account where i'll be sharing my resume um cybersecurity and tech career related resources so definitely check that out in the link in the description if you're interested and thank you guys again so so much for your support and watching i'm super excited to be growing this little community on this channel with you guys and definitely also let me know if you guys would be interested in a discord channel potentially because i know it was brought up before by one of you in the comments so yeah i would love to start something like that if that is something you guys are also interested in but if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye